Hey fellow babies, thank you for joining us on Packer Factor on Sifted.net as a Patreon patron. We appreciate your patronage. Um, if you're not a patron, please consider it. Shane just built a new studio. He needs to recoup his billions of dollars of investment. Uh, just a couple of bucks a month is all we ask for uh, until we get this damn debt paid off. If you're not a Patreon patron and you're watching on YouTube, at a minimum, would you please link your Twitch account to your Amazon Prime account? We get a couple bucks a month from Amazon. That would be cool. From YouTube, from Sean Garman. When does a publisher know it's more profitable to stop selling content from an existing game or release a sequel? Uh, you know, they know this before they even release the game. Um, there's a content plan. The content plan typically is a year. And more, more often than that, it's even like nine months. And they pretty much decide after a year, you're not gonna play the game again. The exception to that is a game like GTA, which is a 2013 release and they're still releasing online content. But the fact is, it's not really online content for GTA. It's really a different game called GTA Online. You aren't doing the missions from GTA when you play GTA Online. GTA Online is a free-to-play version of GTA. Just that Take-Two required you to buy GTA in order to play it. So I would say FIFA Ultimate Team is the same. You don't actually play FIFA. Ultimate Team is like this add-on that, that you could make completely free-to-play. They just want to sell you FIFA every year so they have you start all over again. Um, so annual games, one-year plan for sure. Three-year games, typically a one-year plan. The guys who get away with supporting a game longer than you know, three years are GTA because it comes out every eight or something like that. Um, so they, they literally plan this from the first day. And I think the Rockstar guys probably didn't expect to be supporting GTA Online this far, but it was so successful that it was worth you know, supporting. So, I mean, the right answer to your question is, they know as soon as the revenues drop off. So let's let's go with like Fortnite or Overwatch. When is Fortnite 2 coming out? Never. When is Overwatch 2 coming out? When Overwatch 1 starts to drift off and, and look like nothing. So Overwatch 2 might come out sooner rather than later, but before they launch that, I think they just make Overwatch free to play. They've already invested in all the characters and the content. Let's just make it free to play and see if it gets a new life of its own. So again, it's a plan. Uh, these guys map it out and think it out, and they only change it if they're surprised either way. More profitable than they expected, they keep it going longer. Less profitable than they expected, they cut it off and they move on to the next thing. Our next question from YouTube from Boogaloo Jenkins. Pack my man. What is the one gaming trend that surprised you the most during the run of Generation 8 consoles. Have there been any trends that went the complete opposite direction of what you initially assumed? I'd say if there's anything that surprised me, it's that we had a, a free-to-play game that was invented on the PC, migrated to consoles, the consoles accepted it, and it allowed cross-platform play. And although it took a year and a half, maybe, for the two console manufacturers to agree, one did right away and one took a while, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that the technology of Fortnite allows cross-platform play. I'm shocked that it's popular on the consoles. And I'm shocked that the um, console manufacturers allowed cross-platform play. So that is something that I didn't think the technology was there. I really didn't. Um, it's hard to make a game that works synchronous across different platforms and especially mobile. So uh, Epic is the most impressive company I've ever seen. I'm sure the Unity guys could do the same thing, but they haven't done it yet. But Epic, my God, that Unreal Engine, God bless them, props to them, impressive. That really surprised me. And the trend of free to play really surprised me. Um, I would never have called that. And now, you know, what happened after that? Apex Legends. Now, whether you think it's good or not, that's a trend that major console publishers are gonna suddenly make games that are free to start. That's shocking to me. Uh, never saw that happening. Um, have there been any trends that went the complete opposite direction from what I initially assumed? 
You know, I guess the, the reason I'm having trouble answering the question, it's not a lack of humility. It's that I don't really have firm convictions about very many things, and I'm pretty flexible. So if I think something is one way and I start to see that it's wrong, I change my view and say, nope, that's wrong. Um, I've only been wrong for multiple years once, and that's on Netflix, and I'm not wrong. Um, so, you know, I, I, it's always made no sense to me that all the content owners would give away their content to Netflix so cheaply and allow Netflix to capture all the profits from their content. And beginning in 2012, I called it and said, they're going to stop giving Netflix their content. They're going to pull back and they're going to compete with their own services. And what do you know, from 2012 through 2019, I've been wrong and now it's happening. Our next question from YouTube from Dave Curtis. With the inevitable future of gaming being streaming, companies will compete exclusively with IP. There's a lot of relative, relatively dormant IP like Castlevania, Mega Man, and Power Stone that could probably be had for cheap, relatively cheap in 2019. So shouldn't the big three be buying as much IP as possible? Which is more valuable a more valuable investment in the long run, buying a talented studio or classic IP. If the future is streaming, then you're only going to buy a console if you can't play the game any other way. Um, I don't think uh, classic IP is worth anything. I mean, how, ma how many dollars did Crash Bandicoot do in re-release? You know, whatever, 100 million? I mean, that's great, but you're not going to, no one would buy a console to play Crash Bandicoot. So, and, and literally there's like, a dozen of those IPs. I mean, I agree, the Castlevania and Mega Man have value, but I don't even remember Power Stone. What's the Power? Dreamcast fighting game. Yeah, I don't remember it. So I, you know, no, you need like a ton of it. You need like all the games ever made. Um, the the Dorman IP is literally everything ever made for the GBA. That's the the IP that I think has tremendous value. I think Nintendo has the biggest library of anybody, but. Um, no, buying a talented studio is more valuable. Um, games don't have a long life, and, and the fact is we want new stuff. And we, you know, like, I, I think you can pull off bringing back, like, Halo the Master Chief Collection and giving people four games for 50 bucks, sure. But I don't think you could sell Halo 1 to anybody. I don't think they'd buy it. So I, I just don't agree with you. I think that studios are where it's at, new IP is where it's at, and streaming, unfortunately, is going to put the big three out of business, and it's going to be a new big three. You know, Arcane doing Prey. You know, I think that's they, they did a great job, but that's what you get is like old IP with a new twist, and yes, but do you want to play Castlevania 2020? Maybe you want, Castlevania is pretty good. Yeah. You can probably pull it off with that. Mega Man's pretty good. Yeah, these are a kind of exception. Yeah, but there's, like I said, there's 20 of them. There's not, 500 of them, I don't think. Our last question this week from YouTube from CAFC101. Bethesda recently re-released Doom for all three consoles, but it requires that you log into Bethesda's service. The ports are not as good as the ports of Doom for last generation consoles. Do moves like this hurt a publisher's reputation to a significant degree? Do you think there will ever be a time when publishers treat their back catalogs with a bit more respect or is it viewed as an easy way to make fast fast cash. You know, I, I honestly don't know if I can answer this. I don't know why they require you to log into the service. I, I really couldn't tell you. I mean, it might be that the game, they just couldn't put enough on the disc and they need to support it with some kind of a stream. But I don't know the answer. I don't know why the port's not as good. I, you know, I can't tell you. I mean, I don't, technologically, I don't know what they did differently. Um, but the answer is, do I think there's a time when they'll treat their back catalogs with respect? That's what they, Crash Bandicoot treated the back catalog with respect twice. Those are good games. Modern Warfare Remastered, you know, treated it with respect. I think um, Sony's got a, a lot of good content from PS1, PS2 days. And I think you'll probably see Sony start to re-release. I think you'll see it with the PS5. I think you're gonna get a lot of really big re-releases. Um, they did a really great job with the Uncharted collection. I think that You'll get, and, and that, I don't, I, I, if you played it, it looked amazing. I mean, it was really, really first rate. So I think that uh, it depends on the game. I mean, Sony is taking it very seriously. 
Bethesda, you know, Doom, I don't think, that's an old id game. I don't think that they, they didn't, they didn't really make it, they bought it. You know, id was an independent studio when they made Doom, Doom 3 even. So it really depends on the, on the content, but I don't know why they required a sign of their service. I don't know why the ports were bad. Um, I, sorry, can't answer that one. Anyway, thanks for joining us on this week's Pactor Factor. I didn't do any scotch talk, um, but I gotta tell you guys, uh, it's earnings. And I've been sipping a little scotch each night. And uh, last night, it was not the end of earnings, but it's Friday now. Last night was my last earnings for the week. I opened up a 17-year-old Glen Farkless. Oh my God, what a great scotch. And I've been drinking 12-year-old whiskey. And when you open up a 17 and you've been drinking 12, oh my God, you can just so much tell. It is so good. So Glen Farkless 17, I'm just telling you guys, if you have anybody special in your life, at, that like if your dad is turning 50 and you want to buy him a nice bottle of scotch, that's the one. Glenn Farkless. Oh, if your dad's turning 50, you're probably not 21. If your dad's turning <laughs> 60, buy him a bottle of Glenn Farkless 17. It's about 100 bucks a bottle. Um, anyway, that's it for Pactor Factor for this week. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I hope you are a patron at, of Sifted on Patreon. And if so, a couple bucks a month is all we ask, and that will pay for the, our new investment in our new studio. Um, if you aren't a Patreon patron, please link your Twitch account to your Amazon Prime account and we get a couple bucks from Amazon. It is easy and the instructions are in the show description. If you can't do either of those, follow me on Twitter at Michael Pactor, follow Shane at Dinfire, follow Sifted at Sifted Games, play Empires and Puzzles, get to level 12, get 400 trophies and join Achilles TM, my alliance, we kick Polish butt. Yeah, I thought streaming would materialize on devices before it materialized in the cloud. And I still think that's going to happen. I still think Amazon's going to do it through an Echo and not the cloud. But it might end up just being cheaper to stream. Like, obviously, if you don't need an Echo, then stream on your TV without an Echo, that's great. Look what Google's doing, though. They're making you buy a Chromecast. And they're making you buy a controller. So why can't Amazon just give you an Echo? and a controller for the same price as a Chromecast and a controller. I think they will. I think it's cheaper to distribute the game and download the full game file. You don't have to worry about your always on internet connection. You can download the game overnight and then play it. So I still think that's gonna happen, but I could be wrong on that. That, may, that is going in a different direction than I assumed. I made a presentation, you can find this on YouTube, Pactor Barcelona, September 19th, 2015. So four years ago. I made a presentation about why Amazon's going to win the streaming wars, but I said it would be device download to an Echo. So let's see if that materializes. So for four years, I thought it was going to be the device. That's going in a different direction than I expected. And by the way, OnLive was streaming, you know, at the time, and Gaikai was streaming prior to 2015. I thought it would reverse and go back to devices. Maybe I'll be wrong.